Hey there folks, I hope you're doing well. Get some paint on your minis. Gore effects can really amp up your miniatures. So in this Excuse video- me, I'm sorry to interrupt, but is this really appropriate? Appropriate for what? We're talking about miniatures. Yes, but what are we teaching the children? Really? The children? I'm trying to make a video here. Can you just fuck- Seriously, you're going to use that kind I'm of- I'm sorry everybody, now? just a second. I gotta deal with this. on the internet of all pla- Wait, what are, you, what are you doing with that? No, 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 no. Sorry about that, folks. So, as I was saying, gore effects can really amp up your miniatures. So, let's take a look at how to achieve that. But first, you need to make sure that your miniatures are painted up to the level that you want to achieve for your end result. So, let's get to it and paint up our minis. We're gonna do a montage. And if you don't want any of that nonsense, you can just click the timestamp in the description and get straight to the blood and guts. So, let's do it. With our minis painted up, we can now do some gore effects. You can see right here with this test that I did that this mixture is actually pretty resilient. You can pull on it, it's very stretchy, uh, works really well, and it gives some pretty good results as you can see on my test mini here. And you also don't need too much to make this effect. You just need some Uhu glue, some Mod Podge, I like the gloss stuff, uh, whatever paints you want to color the effect with, an old toothbrush, an old paintbrush and just something to mix it all up in. I will leave a link in the description to some of these items if you don't know where to get them. Now step one is to just mix up your colors or just use them straight out of the pot if that's what you're going for. Uh, I used Flesh Terrors Red contrast paint and a black wash. Why I use these is because uh, a wash and contrast are a little more transparent so it lets some of that Uhu glue transparency kind of show through and these colors together really gave me a nice dark blood color that just really worked out quite well. Next I mix in some Mod Podge. If you don't know what this is, it's kind of an all-in-one glue solution. It can also be used as a sealer and as a finish. The reason I'm mixing it in is because it adds a lot of extra strength to the effect, so it makes it a little more resilient. Uh, but it also makes it kind of stretchy and gives you a longer working time with this mix because Uhu glue tends to dry up fairly quickly. Um, and more than anything, it also adds this really nice gloss finish to the blood, which makes it look a little more realistic and interesting. Now to add in the magic sauce. Uhu glue is basically the body here that's going to be pulling all of the load. Uh, it's essentially the core of this effect. It's another all-purpose glue, uh, but it gets really stringy and wiry, uh, and more so as it starts to dry. You've probably seen a glue like this at some point in your life. Um, I've never actually used it for anything practical outside of this. So you're gonna add in a fair amount of Uhu glue. Getting the right balance is kind of tricky. Um, Uhu glue tends to dry quite quickly. 
uh, but being mixed in with so much paint and the Mod Podge tends to slow it down a little bit, but the longer you wait, the stringier and thicker and goopier this is going to get. Now for the fun part, which is actually working with this mixture, it's actually super easy to apply this. Just make sure you're a little careful so you don't end up with blood in places where you don't want it. Me, I went a little ham here because I want a really gory, nasty looking flesh eater quartz army. You can see here, as I took it out of the mixture container, um, it's really already starting to get quite stringy. The Uhu glue dries quite quickly and the more it dries, the stringier it gets. So you can kind of just start playing with it once it's on the model and it's gonna get stringier and stringier as you're kind of poking around and pulling at it. So you can start to do more interesting things as it begins to dry. Or if you just want big wet blobs everywhere that you can kind of just slap it down and, and leave it if you really want to. But me, I wanted little strings of blood kind of all over the place just to have some fun dynamics on my models. Now, you can do anything with this stuff, really, just depending on the consistency that you have created and the colors you have used to create your concoction. So you could use this for things like slime if you made it green. Uh, you could leave it clear and use it for saliva coming off of big monsters' uh, teeth and stuff like that. Really, it's quite um, easy to work with um, and it just takes a bit of time to kind of figure out the consistency you need um, and the right kind of mixtures and everything. But once you have it, boom, super easy. Now you may or may not be asking, well, what is the toothbrush for? Well, back off Hasselhoff, I'm getting to it. So essentially what this is for is to add some dynamic splatter effects on your miniatures. Uh, this is a pretty common tool in the hobby. A lot of you probably already know about this, but I figure it's important to mention for anybody that has not used it before. So essentially you just dip it into whatever color you are wanting to put on the model. Uh, make sure you put a fair amount on there, but don't be too heavy handed. And then uh, I would wear some gloves just so you don't get this all over your hands, but essentially you just pull back on the bristles with a finger and let those bristles fly forwards and they will fling paint all over the model in kind of random patterns. Um, you can even get a tool from, I believe, AK Interactive. They have like a splatter tool which has different kinds of bristles all around it in different densities and stuff like that. And they create kind of different patterns, but I've found an old toothbrush works just fine. Um, and since I'm wearing gloves and I get it all over my finger, I actually sometimes even just take my finger and kind of dab some of the blood off my glove onto the model too, to add some thicker points of splatter. So yeah, a useful tool and one you probably already have laying around. Well, I guess that's pretty much it. Nice and gory. What do you folks think about these ghouls and boys? I think they turned out pretty well. I had a lot of fun working with these effects. It's always a blast to take a model that looks pretty good and then start adding in all kinds of neat little effects that really take it to the next level. I painted these guys up pretty quickly, uh, 20 of them. And yeah, I couldn't be happier with my results. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. All right, so I hope some of you found this video helpful. Let me know down below if you did or if you didn't. Maybe you have better ideas on how to create blood, guts, spit, gore, ooze, slime, all that stuff. It's all fun and I wanna learn from you and I'm always looking for better ways to do these things. Don't forget to like, dislike, subscribe maybe. I notice it all, I'm still a smaller channel and it's super appreciated. And until next time, paint today for a better tomorrow. Peace out. Hey, 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 hey,